Hi, it's Dwyer. It is March 3rd, 2024. About to be March 4th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Also, money1776.com, a free site. Nothing I say in this video should be construed as investment advice. I want everyone to think for themselves and to consult with their own advisors and to conduct their own due diligence. I'm simply sharing what is on my mind, what I'm considering, uh, in some cases what I'm pursuing, how I see the markets, right? I'm just offering a second opinion from a complete stranger online. So, let's talk about what's going on in the world right now. I believe crypto is the best play on the board, as I have said in numerous videos. But I also believe that investors need to know the lay of the land. I don't have skin in the game for many of the stocks I'm going to mention in this video. Again, I need for you to follow your own due diligence, right? The opinion you should follow should be your own. Let's talk macro how I see the world so you can understand my biases. I believe we, and by we I mean the United States of America, will eventually head into a recession. Predicting the exact timing is difficult, right? I would argue it's impossible since economic data can be revised, right? There's a possibility, folks, that we're in a recession right now. Also, an additional ground, uh, reason for the impossibility of determining the timing, is that appearances are deceiving, as things might be fueled by debt and might appear to be, at least in the short run, a vibrant economy when it is an economy propped up by debt. Right? Another independent reason is that unexpected world developments like COVID or a Russian invasion of Ukraine can happen that can have an unanticipated fallout, such as unwarranted economic stoppages and shutdowns with mandated vaccines and unwarranted government binge spending or disrupted supply lines for energy in Europe and other places. Now what is important is to remember that very few are successful. And I mean very few with market timing. Right, very few. The market operates on its own timetable. And that timetable is mostly impossible to predict. Instead of market timing, think of having time in the market. Right? In the comment section of this YouTube video, I will place a link to famed investor Marty Zwig's 17 Rules of Investing. I view it as a worthwhile read. Right? Now let's talk general approach. I believe all of us need to spend a lot of time developing a macro view of the economy. To me, that's essential. Know when the public has started to realize certain things, such as that electric vehicles, we'll call them EVs here, will require an extensive infrastructure rollout, including an overhaul of the electric grid. The EV market is dampening to the point where Apple is backing out of the space. Also, know not to trust the government, especially during election years when it discusses inflation. Understand that some of the talk of a soft landing is political spin that might be self-serving for those in power or for other investors who want to confuse you so they can profit from their stock positions or plans. Folks, there's a lot of misinformation, in my opinion, out there concerning the market. 
Question everything, including this video. Make your own decisions. Think for yourself. Remember, it's not a stock market. It's a market of stocks. Whether it is a bull or bear market, some stocks will fail and some stocks will succeed. Your goal is to do your research and to predict the markets that will be vibrant in the future. Once you find a market that you think will be vibrant, Look up and study the sector ETFs to determine their primary holdings. Then research those companies. I want monopolies, right? Look, life's unfair. We're not here trying to level the playing field. We're actually here trying to make a profit. I want monopolies. I want companies with patents. I want companies with first mover advantages companies with ecosystems, right? Companies with features that give them a strategic advantage. But remember, whatever the social narrative, if you invest in new companies or startups, it is simply impossible, in my opinion, to determine which companies are gonna make it. Right? In hindsight, people say, oh, this individual was special. Right? Oh, of course this company was going to make it. The reality is far different. The story of two young guys in a garage creating a computer that changes the world, whether that's Hewlett and Packet, or for a later generation, Jobs and Wozniak, I just don't think you can reliably predict which companies are going to make it. If you're going to bet on the unknown, consider also adding an ETF in that market that has a basket of stocks. Right? Understand out of his dorm room with $1,000, Michael Dell built a multi billion dollar empire. Right? You cannot predict. The Michael Dells of the world. You can't predict their success. All of this talk about having a good management team implies that that's all it takes. Good management team and capital to be successful. You and I know that there's a lot of luck involved. There's a lot of right product, right place involved. You and I know that when two guys are in their garage coming up with a computer, Many people, the majority of the market, is going to say, gee, why would a consumer use these products? Right? With that in mind, here is some of what I like in the following markets. Right? I like Bitcoin and some other cryptocurrencies. I can't discuss them here because I have a paid Substack site. It's dewire70905.substack.com. Again, dewire70905.substack.com. But understand, where I have my own money, it's predominantly in digital assets. Right? Food for thought. Outside of digital assets, precious metals. I have some gold, I have some silver. I believe you particularly want to have your silver in the form of physical coins. Because if we have rampant inflation, if banks start failing and the price of the dollar becomes volatile and you need to buy eggs, milk, things like that, if the currency, the fiat currency, collapses, I believe merchants are going to accept silver coins. Understand a gold coin with gold going off at more than $2,000 an ounce is just too much in terms of the change you would be getting 
in fiat currency and understand if you know about how quickly fiat currency can depreciate in countries like the Weimar Republic or these days in Argentina, for example, in Venezuela, then you understand that you're better off carrying coins that are worth about $23 a coin as opposed to coins that are worth more than $2,000 a coin when you go shopping. Right now, just understand if holding coins, gold or silver, is not your thing, right? You don't want the risk involved in storing the coins, right? You understand that you have thieves who will hit storage units to try to get some of your assets. My storage unit was actually robbed, believe it or not, right? Um, if you don't want the storage hassles and you just want an online company that will store your physical gold and silver for you that you can buy and they will credit you with an amount of gold and silver um, I use onegold.com right again this isn't an endorsement I'm just sharing what I'm doing right in terms of gold mining I prefer ETFs because, quite frankly, gold mining stocks are among the most volatile stocks in the entire investment universe. Right? Understand, too, everyone thinks their hole in the ground is going to lead to the next great mine. There are very few great gold mines globally. Right? So, in terms of ETFs, you have the GDX and you have the GDXJ, right? Let me also uh, point out too that in terms of gold miners, just understand, even at 2,000 plus an ounce, gold's had a rough run of it. So you may have noticed that Newmont had a very shaky earnings report. Um, Newmont, Agnico, Eagles, uh, Newmont symbol is NEM, um, Agnico is AEM, right? Barrick, Gold Corp, uh, GOLD. I believe you can get exponential growth and profits, huge upside from those three miners. If gold goes up to $3,000 an ounce, which I expect it to do, understand how markets really work. Bitcoin, lately, was dormant. You know, it was lingering in the low 40s, right? That's after a breakout from the 30s, right? We had a very bad crypto winter. Um, look at the volatility of Bitcoin. Well, now Bitcoin's in the 60s. It's been on fire the last few weeks, right? You have a halving coming up in April. You just had the um, issuance of spot Bitcoin ETFs from some big time players in the United States, right? All of that helped Bitcoin jump. Markets are herky-jerky. Things aren't on an escalator. They're just jumping up two floors after that spring is coiled by public sentiment that's negative. Right, so just understand you're not going to find too many gold miners issuing recent earnings reports that are complementary. What you need to think about is the risk of inflation. Right, you need to use your own two eyes, go to the supermarket, look at the price of milk, look at the price of eggs. You need to go to restaurants, whether they're great eating establishments or whether they're fast food. And you need to ask yourself, why are burritos with guacamole costing me more than $15? When years ago, and that's without the drink and chips, years ago, of course, this was viewed as fast food. You could get a burrito for 6 $7, right? You need to ask yourself, why is it so hard for Carl's Jr. to give me a superstar with cheese? for less than nine dollars right folks these fast food restaurants uh, the ones that used to be manned by a lot of 
high school and college kids where you thought, okay, I deserve a break today. Let me buy a cheap meal here, save some money, feed my family. Now you notice the bill is coming out to nine to ten dollars per person. Right? In this kind of atmosphere where people are as deluded as they are, right? Think about it. How could a country have a thirty-four trillion dollar debt? Right? A debt that's increasing by a trillion dollars every hundred days and yet be able to borrow money over a 30-year period, look at the bond market, for under 4.5%. Folks, it makes no sense. Right? Keep in mind, too, our government's even worse than that. You have a dog and pony show in Washington where every few months we hear that some emergency bill has to be signed just to keep the government open. Now, if I'm a creditor, how could that possibly be reassuring? How could the run-up in the national debt possibly be reassuring? As I get paid on my 30-year bond, don't I actually want to be able to make a profit? What am I doing tying up money for 30 years if all you're going to pay me is less than 5%? as you accumulate trillions of dollars of debt, including, let's do the math, if it's a trillion dollars of new debt every hundred days, folks, every year, the country is jumping more than three trillion dollars in debt. What's the solution to Social Security? Do we have one? No, we don't. You understand the debt servicing right now is on par with our military expenditures. Right? So just, just understand, we can look at gold, we can call it a barbaric old metal and things like that. In a world where you have a huge inflation risk with a dying fiat currency, right? Gold is going to continue to have an audience. Let's go one step further. I mentioned earlier in this video that I love digital assets, some digital assets, right? I'm selective. But I need for you to understand the risk involved. We're here talking about AI right now. That can write books and things like that, right? AI now, you're hearing about text-to-speech. You should also know in terms of computer speeds, China is, um, you know, ahead of the United States right now. In terms of the number of high-speed computers, understand crypto people should be concerned about quantum computing. That's a threat as it might be able to unravel and overcome the security features of certainly some of the weaker cryptocurrencies. Right? I don't have to unravel Bitcoin to destabilize Bitcoin. If I can show that I can unravel other cryptos and the market panics. Right? In that world, there are always going to be central banks who might be thinking and who, in my opinion, eventually will migrate into holding some Bitcoin. But they understand that Bitcoin carries risk that gold does not carry, right? I can get a bar of gold and not worry about some quantum computer overcoming my encryption, right? Folks, there's always going to be a market for gold and silver in an inflationary world, right? Let's stop kidding ourselves. It's only because people have been deluded by stories of soft landing and no landing. That gold isn't higher right now. Just like we know, Bitcoin is going to continue ramping up. The historical pattern is that in years like this, where you have halvings, Bitcoin ramps up after the halving. Dan Tapiero, look him up. 
is talking about if Bitcoin follows historical patterns. At the end of this cycle, Bitcoin should be around $900,000 a coin. Right, folks, that's just based on historical price patterns. Right, you and I also know it's only a matter of time before all of these pension plans that are underwater start to look at Bitcoin as a way to preserve their capital. Right, folks, it's only a matter of time. One wonders when a big pension plan in a place like, let's say, Kentucky or Illinois is going to start giving its members the opportunity to have some of their pension debt backed by Bitcoin, right? It's only a matter of time, too. And I know this sounds crazy to non-believers, right? Many of my friends are non-believers in digital assets. But it's only a matter of time before, instead of the hostility that you're getting from countries like Nigeria, right? More than 200 million people in Nigeria, right? Nigeria, of course, is um, trying to prop up its local currency as if that's going to work, as if we haven't learned from Venezuela, right? And, of course, they're coming down on Bitcoin. You have to blame someone or something for your citizenry losing faith in your government-issued fiat currency Instead of blaming the fiat nature of your currency, why not blame Bitcoin, right? You and I know there's going to be a country of several million people that's going to actually embrace Bitcoin, some country far bigger than El Salvador. And you and I know they're going to be copycats if that's successful, just like they're going to be copycats of Malay's approach in Argentina in terms of reducing the size of government and handling its debt, right? So gold and silver, they're not talked about enough, right? Don't be one of these young people who's too cool to own gold and silver, right? I hope you didn't make that mistake with Bitcoin. I hope you have ridden that train from the 40s to now above 60, right? Don't be too cool to have silver coins, don't be too cool to have gold coins. Don't be too cool to have accounts at onegold.com where you have coins in foreign countries. You can pick the country, right? Off a list of uh, set countries, right? Just in case you have another FDR situation where he orders Americans to turn in their gold. No American history. Well, let's talk about some other ideas. Energy. I've held Exxon, symbol is XOM, for some time. Folks, you're getting dividends. Now, of course, Exxon is into lithium. Understand, too, Exxon has an expanded natural gas presence in the Permian Basin. I also like Viper Energy. The symbol is VNOM. Viper ha just had a strong fourth quarter. I also like Diamondback Energy. The symbol is F-A-N-G. Right? If you're into ETFs, I'm keeping an eye on GUSH. G-U-S-H. Which is a leveraged play for the bullish narrative. Right? I'm also into XLE, which is very liquid. And XOP. As I've said in past videos, you have electric vehicles, which will strain the electrical grid. You also have cryptocurrency, which will have its own demands on the electrical grid. You also have artificial intelligence, which of course requires a lot of electrical power. Right, folks, the electricity grid and keep in mind, natural gas is part of the generation of electricity. The electricity grid is really going to come under pressure, isn't it? Let me also point out, too, 
we all thought the future was an either or situation in terms of transportation right we thought it was either going to be an electric vehicle future or it was going to be an internal combustion engine future right folks it's probably both right fossil fuels will still be in demand for you to drive your car people are figuring out that when they have that Tesla charging overnight in their garage, their electrical bills jumping in, in value. Understand here in California a few years ago, we had brownouts, right? That's before the rollout of AI on this level. That's before the rollout of crypto on this level. Right? So just understand energy is going to be a big issue. So this generation needs to realize that nuclear energy is going to become an increasing reality. I know we went through a period of time when I was younger, nuclear energy was supposed to be too dangerous and stuff like that. Folks, nothing motivates you to be efficient with the energy you use more than the alternative which is hunger, which is staying on the farm and not making it to the big city in places like China or India, right? Let me also point out too, here in the United States, we say, oh, coal, that wrecks the environment, right? Folks, we share the atmosphere with China, with India, with Indonesia, right? Another country with more than 200 million people know the populations. Right? Uh, China, of course, and India have more than a billion people each. Right? Just understand that in these countries, they're using things like coal for energy. Because, again, the choice is to be in the country on a rice paddy with, you know, a lower level, lower standard of living, or moving to the megacity. Right? Whether it's Beijing, Shenzhen wherever, right? Um, so here, you need to view all of these environmental concerns as really the concerns of first world citizens on a planet where they share the atmosphere with other countries that are trying to bring people through several generations. Right, so fossil fuels are going to continue to be important in the nuclear space. I want folks to look hard at Cameco, CCJ. Right, I need for people to, um, and I understand there's a windmill crowd out there and a solar crowd out there. Um, if you're in a solar, you need to be in a silver. I need for folks to think about the distribution of natural gas. You heard me talk about its role in electricity. Uh, Brookfield Infrastructure Corporation, the symbol is BIPC. Again, BIPC is doing well and is in that space. I also still like EQT, a uh, natural gas company that has had rough times, but I believe they're well positioned Right? Getting back to nuclear, understand the technology has changed. You now have modular nuclear reactors. Right? You'll find out that they're rolling them out in places like China as we speak. One company that operates here in the United States, it has contracts with the U.S. military uh, industrial complex is BWX Technologies, right? The symbol is BWXT, right, folks? The pressure on energy production is going to be substantial given our increased demand for things like AI. Let's also talk about a supply chain play here. You know the Suez Canal right now has problems. You understand that a lot of ships 
are now having to travel longer distances. They have to go all the way around the southern part of Africa. Right, that opens the door for TK Tankers Limited. The symbol is TNK. Right, they're involved in the tanker business. In these uncertain times where the U.S. seems to be having a tussle with the Houthis and where the Suez Canal is now subject to political considerations, right, you need to think about how you can profit off of some of these supply chain problems. I would encourage you to take a look at TNK. Again, it's a symbol. Let's talk about an area that I believe is troubled, but I believe you stand to make a lot of profits. Now, let me be clear. I run a site here on line called uh, housing777.blogspot.com. Right, I read several housing articles um, each week. Right, I have a real estate license, although I don't really use it that much here in California. Right, um, let me just say, I'm personally expecting house prices to drop considerably. Right, what I want people to focus on is the median house price versus the median income. Right, many of us older folks remember when families only needed one income to actually own a home, raise a family, send kids to college. Wasn't that long ago. Then, of course, we got off of the dollar peg that we had, right, moved away from the dollar during the Nixon administration, and now all hell has broken loose, right? I'm expecting interest rates to cause a problem for many homeowners, right? These mortgage rates bite. I'm expecting the debt levels to start to be frowned upon. I'm expecting home prices to drop. But at the same time, and I know this is nuanced, we have a housing shortage in the United States. So, I think folks need to do two things. Recognize that the housing market right now is hopelessly overvalued in much of the United States. And second, to buy some home builders who are doing well. One of them is KB Homes. The symbol is KBH. Give it a look. Now let's talk about AI. You know, with Microsoft, you get a company that has a sizable stake in OpenAI. Understand, OpenAI's Sora could be a game changer. Right? Tyler Perry is not expanding his studio right now because he's afraid of Sora's capabilities. Right? You also have Amazon, an elite cloud computing company. Right? You also have Google. I believe Microsoft, Amazon, Google, uh, they're all well situated for LLM models, right? Understand you have uh, programs like Microsoft's Copilot, Google's Gemini, which used to be Google Bard, right? Understand too, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, each of them have huge cash reserves that they can use to buy promising AI companies. Right, just like Microsoft threw a lot of cash at OpenAI, it has a lot of cash left over that it can throw at other companies. It's very hard to compete with that. Right, extremely difficult. Let me also point out too that you have ASML. These lithography companies are vital to AI, as I've mentioned in prior videos. Um, NVIDIA is very expensive, as is ASML. Understand, NVIDIA is very expensive, but the space is growing significantly. Right? I also like NVIDIA's challengers. AMD, Intel, Taiwan Semiconductor, 
Micron. Uh, the symbols are AMD. Uh, for Intel, it's INTC. For Taiwan Semiconductor, it's TSMC. For Micron, it's MU. I like Dell. You need to think about the servers that can actually handle uh, AI computing, right? I also like Alibaba, which just made a video. They just got an investment in an AI company in China, and they just made a video that highlights their AI capabilities, which I'm going to put in the comment section, the link for it, it's a link to a Mashable article, right, that I will place in the comment section of this YouTube video. Folks, you're going to be astonished at what they can do visually now using AI, right? The world has already changed. It's going to be extremely difficult for new companies to match what Alibaba, the Amazon of China, is doing, right? As well as to match what Amazon is doing um, outside of China. So those are the plays I'm interested in. As I've said, I don't have skin in many of these picks, right? I'm watching them you know, my primary focus, though, because I believe that Bitcoin is really at a generational moment here. Um, you know, my own money is tied up in a lot of digital assets, right? Food for thought. But while I have some money in some of these plays, others of these plays, I'm simply watching and taking note. Right. Let me point out that, you know, the um, the swings are substantial here. One minute, Apple had more than 2000 people working on its future electric vehicle. It walked away from several years of work, several years of work in departing the EV space. Now, one wonders whether that's because perhaps the Apple Vision Pro is doing better than expected, or perhaps internally, Apple, which is working on its AI capability, has had so much success that they've decided to devote their resources in that direction, right? Folks expect a lot of volatility across the board. When NVIDIA recently announced their blowout earnings, understand, many people, before the earnings release, thought the news was going to be bad and thought the company was going to be negatively impacted. Right? The news just showed that the market was even bigger than many people had expected. Right? So you have lofty valuations here. Right, I'm here just naming some Magnificent Seven companies. And I understand they are, to some extent, overvalued in some ways, but I would argue not in the AI space. Right, good luck for a new company to break into that space successfully. Let's just say I view it as a space with a moat, I think a promising startup is going to get co-opted by some of the money that these companies can throw to get an ownership interest. Those are my thoughts today, this late Sunday, early Monday of this week. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.